Um, and I'm going to start with none other than Peter. I'm sorry, Peter, I can't pronounce your surname. Uh, I, you've told me so many times, but it's it's not one that I can I can make come out of my face. Kes Diora, that could be. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Peter, we're, we're going to get that one absolutely wrong. Um, <laughs> but um, a player that really should need no introduction. He plays for Poland in this event and um, has done so uh, so consistently well in so many smaller tournaments. I've uh, just not quite made it onto the larger stage, um, except for that one time in Bilbao in the 2017 series uh, where he won almost undefeated. Uh, unfortunately, he did arrive late to that tournament, uh, got a loss in round one, and then proceeded to be uh, undefeated for the rest of the tournament. So uh, we like to say between us that he lost to the oven round one and then uh, won for the rest of the day. A fantastic player, really great to showcase him. Uh, but up against him, Jamie, is his opponent from Finland. Yeah, we've got Larry Hallinan coming out here and I'm really, really looking forward to, to watching him play. I know that he, he can bring some very unique choices. I, I, I know that everyone thinks that I'm known for my unique choices, but then you should see some of these <laughs> Finnish players come out with some of their teams. They, they are a treat to, to watch, and I'm really looking forward to this as well. Larry coming out here. He's been able to uh, top cut the DC Open, uh, this previous Worlds that has just gone as well was able to just narrowly miss top cut in the 2018 Malmo Regional Championships as well, as, as getting top 64 in the 2019 North American Internationals. So, uh, so going, showing some good success in these tournaments and hoping, hopefully we can see him have some future success in these online tournaments as well. Yeah, nice to see uh, players that do travel. Uh, you talked about the DC Open, which is great. Uh, also, the North American International Championships, which not every European player goes to, but Definitely, uh, once we're all allowed to go back to live events and we can uh, play safely, then it's something I would really recommend to players at home to give it a go because uh, there's such good events. Um, you know, Worlds is amazing. North American Internationals is amazing for similar reasons, but it is its own event and uh, not something that, as I say, us Europeans really do experience enough. Um, so especially with uh, Worlds next time, hopefully, as long as everything's all in order, uh, should be in London, North American internationals may be one that uh, us Europeans could check out. Yeah, well, speaking of the Europeans, we're going to be watching these two battle it out right now for Poland and Finland. So we're going to be getting into this game here and we're going to be seeing, I believe this is going to be from Peter's side. Um, no, it's going to be from Lowry's side, because we can see that Peter is, is going to be the opponent there. So for Lowry, we're going to be seeing the Terrakion, Dragapult, Hatterene, Indeedy, Lilligant, and the Torkoal. And for Peter's side, we're going to see Charizard, Venusaur, Togekiss, Tyranitar, Dusclops, and Torkoal. Yeah, so it seems like it's going to be a little bit of a battle of the sun here. Um, but the only difference being that Lilligant being the one that Lowry's uh, decided to opt for. Uh, you can see it there instead of the Venusaur, which now gets access to its Gigantamax form. Um, and certainly, um, we've been talking recently, Jamie, about how uh, strong that G-Max uh, Vine Lash is and how much damage that it does to their opponents. And of course, Venusaur has the advantage over Lilligant in that it does have access to that poison typing, um, so will be super effective. Of course, Larry has some other options that he has to go down. We have that Hatterene and Indeedy able to maybe set up a trick room, uh, maybe use that Torkoal. Um, and even though there's a Torkoal on Peter's side as well, um, he is going to be able, Torkoal is going to be able to do a lot of damage to Venusaur and Lilligant on either side of the field. So uh, maybe we'll see a little bit of a trick room game. Maybe we'll see some fast Pokemon with Venusaur and um, Lilligant battling it out at the top end of the speed tiers, but not too much going on in the middle, I don't think. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting one because you've got the, the Torkoals threatening big damage in the trick rooms, but then you've got those those Chlorophyll Sweepers as well, uh, which we do see straight away coming out from Peter's side. He is going to be leading with the Venusaur as well as the Torkoals so that it gets that Chlorophyll boost immediately. And from Larry's side, we're going to be seeing Terrakion and Dragapult coming out. Exactly that. And something that uh, I didn't mention that probably should is the Dragapult does get access to beat up and Terrakion um, is, has that justified ability. So if uh, Dragapult decides to go for beat up in Terrakion's direction, 
that could be a very good option for Lowry to get some really strong damage there. Uh, definitely enough to pick up the knockouts on Torkoal with a, a big rock slide, but or even uh, change the weather with going for a max rockfall and bringing that sand into play. But Torkoal not wanting to stick around on Peter's side. Going to be switching into that dust Dustlops instead. And it's going to be frisking the items here. We're going to see the hard stone coming out from the Draken, as well as the assault vest on the Dragapult. So much more defensive Dragapult, probably indicating that it does have that beat up to pair with the Terrakion. And we are going to be seeing a Dynamax coming out immediately from Lowry's side of the field. And it's not going to be the Terrakion, it's going to be the Dragapult. So no beat ups are going to be coming out this turn from the Dragapult. Instead, it's going to be uh, potentially going for those airstreams to target the Venusaur super effectively. No Dynamax coming out from the Venusaur on Peter's side instead. We're going to see a helping hand wow. come out from the Terrakion. Wow, but Sleep Powder is going to connect thanks to that Chlorophyll Booster, is going to outspeed that Dragapult and put it to sleep immediately and completely waste that first turn of Dynamax for Lowry's side. That's a really unfortunate turn there for Lowry, uh, setting up the Dragapult to do lots of damage, uh, quite possibly predicting that uh, Terrakion was going to be the target, maybe expecting Peter to think, ah, oh, you know, Terrakion's on the field, there's the potential of beat up. Uh, I'm going to deal with the Terrakion, but instead Peter decides to deal with the Dragapult. Make sure that beat up never goes off, and uh, a really good way to uh, play the turn for Peter there. Of course, Torkoal coming out into Dustbox, making sure that he's got an option to deal with that Terrakion, just in case the Sleep Powder misses and something else happens uh, in that turn. And we're going to be seeing the, the Terrakion switch out here, fearing the, the Grass move coming out from the from the Venusaur here as the Indeed switches in and activates its Psychic Seed thanks to it setting its own Psychic Terrain to be able to get that boost and a Frenzy Plant is the move of choice coming out from the Venusaur into the Indeed but thanks to that special defense boost it got it doesn't even do half damage to that Indeed and now the Venusaur won't be moving in the next turn. Dragapult is also not going to be moving thanks to that sleep as the Dust Ops reverses the dimensions with that Trick Room. Uh, yeah, so, so a bit of a strange turn there for Peter going for the Frenzy Plant, uh, opting not to go to its Gigantamax form, and uh, now that Venusaur is going to have to take a turn to recharge, not going to be able to switch out, and so if that Dragapult does wake up this turn, uh, maybe an opportunity there for uh, Lori to get a little bit more momentum coming into this turn. Of course, uh, we do have the... Uh, Dustlops now switching out, uh, going out of its Dynamax form as well, so interesting turn there for Lori. Yeah, so being asleep for two turns of Dynamax and switching out on the last, so no Dynamax moves coming out from Lowry's side. Instead, switching into that Hatterene, which <laughs> did bounce back that will it thanks to that magic bounce, onto the Dustlops, so uh, no burn's going to be coming out onto this Hatterene, instead going to be burning that Dustlops, so cutting that attack even further for the Dustlops. But one of the new moves coming out here, expanding force from the Yazidi, thanks to being inside the terrain, it is going to be a spread move and hit both targets, and that Venusaur is able to slide, but thanks to it using the Frenzy Plant before, it wasn't able to move this turn. No, certainly not, and uh, not able to switch either. A really good turn there for Lowry, quite a... Uh... Quite a cheeky play there, predicting the Will-O-Wisp from the Dust Clops and bouncing it right the way back. Uh, that passive damage is going to stack up and uh, going to be something that Peter has to uh, maybe not think about right this moment, but some, certainly something to think about in the end game with what health that Dust Clops is at towards the latter stage of the game. A very good switch in here for those expanding forces with that Tyranitar replacing the Venusaur here and going to be setting up the Sands to overwrite the Sun and we're going to see the bulldoze coming out from that dust so going to potentially be activating that weakness policy on the Tyranitar as we've seen so often come out from the dust as well and we are indeed going to be seeing that weakness policy come out from the Tyranitar and going to be boosting the attack and the special attack as well as doing a little bit of chips the Indeedee and the Hatterene and reducing their speeds as well and Dazzling Gleam is going to be coming out from the Hatterene no expanding force is going to be able to hit that Tyranitar for a very nice chunk of damage bringing it under 50% and Indeedy is going to imprison here, so no moves coming out from Peter's side that the Indeedy has access to. No, and that could be a protect on the Indeedy side, stopping that Tyranitar from uh, stopping the Hatterene picking up the knockout. We saw the damage that Dazzling Gleam did with that life orb prop there from the Hatterene. And so, you know, it's something that uh, Peter has to be aware of, uh, that the amount of damage that he's going to take from that uh, Hatterene is maybe enough to pick up the knockout on Tyranitar, but Tyranitar wants to do quite a bit more this game, I'm sure. Uh, so the question is, and we haven't seen a 
uh, Dynamax or a Gigantamax from Peter already this turn, so he does have access to make sure that uh, Tyranitar could go into its Dynamax form, double its health remaining, maybe survive two lots of uh, attacks from Hatterene, uh, certainly not able to protect at the moment, but also does give him access to Max Guard if he wants to maybe play a little bit more defensively um, for the last couple of turns of Trick Room. Yeah, Max Guard would be quite a nice way of getting around the Imprisoned Protects and protect the Tyranitar from the Hatterene. And a lot of Pokemon on Peter's side has, has lost a lot of its HP, so it's going to be not making use of the Dynamax too well with their HP, but we're still going to be seeing it coming out from Peter's side. Almost certainly going to be that Tyranitar boosting it, it, its HP a little bit more so it could potentially survive that doesn't thing or have access to that Max Guard as well. And so you did see the Indeedee switch out, so there is no more Imprison on the Protect as well. So if the Max Guard comes out here, then he would have been able to protect in the future. But instead, it's going to be the Hattering going for the Protect rather than the Tyranitar maybe going for the Max Guard as well. We're going to see here. No, it is going to be firing off that Darkness. And if it hits that Dracul, it's going to give it that Justified Boost, but no, it's going to target the Hattering instead. Thanks to that Protect, it is going to be able to survive that boost of Darkness as well. And have to see what's going to be coming out uh, as well from the Dust Ops as well. It did move. After the Tyranitar here, you say, yeah, it's going to be reversing the the, um, the dimensions again with that trick room, putting it back to normal. Yeah, but brilliant play there from Laurie, bringing that Tyrakia in, knowing that reversing the trick room was an option for Peter, uh, saying, well, look, I've got Hatterene that's slower than uh, Tyranitar or faster under trick room uh, condition. Uh, now I'm going to bring something in that says, well, I'm going to be faster than you now if you undo the trick room and still put pressure on the Tyranitar. A bite by right, more pressure on the Tyranitar coming out from that Terrakion than the Hattery, especially in its Dynamax form. And of course, not something that Peter wants to waste, but it looks like uh, Tyranitar is going to have to go for that match up this turn to stay alive. Yeah, and going to be protecting it from that close combat that was coming out into the Tyranitar from the Terrakion. And a Bulldoze again is going to be coming out from the Dusclops on Peter's side of the field is going to be doing a little bit of damage to both the Terrakion and the Hatterene as well as reducing their speed. So the Hatterene is definitely going to be slower than this Tyranitar and depending on how the Tyranitar is trained as well, it may be able to outspeed this Terrakion at minus one speed as well. But Expanding Force is going to be coming out from the Hatterene. You know, that nice little extra damage to the Dusclops with a critical hit as well and it's going to be able to KO the Dusclops. Yeah, not, um, not likely that the Terrakion is going to be uh, slower than the Tyranitar now. Uh, it took the Bulldoze on the switch in when it activated the weakness policy, so um, not likely that uh, we can uh, just get that uh, speed tier that we need. But it could be that Venusaur's coming in now, uh, able to outspeed the... being a, a little bit naturally faster, able to outspeed the Terrakion. A really good play there from Peter. So you have the grass move, uh, Frenzy Plant, or potentially another grass move. We don't know if uh, Peter's running more than one grass move. Um, and a Max Darkness or a Max Rock Ball coming out from the Tyranitar to knock out the Hatterene slot. And if the Hatterene decides to uh, switch out this turn, it's uh, going to be damaging a lot whatever switches in for that slot. Yeah, and the Venusaur does threaten down the Terrakion with that grass move, but it's shown because it's the Frenzy Plant that would be very dangerous to go for if the Terrakion did switch out and preserve itself, as it would have to take that recharge turn as well. But the Venusaur probably does need to target down this Terrakion to keep the Tyranitar safe from that close combat. And it's going to be Sleep Powder instead of that Frenzy Plant. <laughs> a little bit less accurate, but does connect. We saw that it was hard stone from that Frist, so no Lumber is coming out. This Terrakion will be going to sleep. No close combats going into the Tyranus for this turn, allowing it to go for this Max Darkness into the Hatterene and easily pick up the knockout on the little bit of HP it had left. Yeah, brilliant play there from Peter, and, and fortunate that it, uh, it all worked out for him. A Sleep Powder uh, isn't the most accurate move in the game, but there is more chance that you hit than you don't, so uh, definitely the right play there for Peter, and exactly as you said, Jamie, uh, that if you go for that Frenzy Plant and have to recharge, very, very difficult to come back when your Pokemon are at such low health. So uh, Hatterene does get knocked out. That does stop uh, stop Laurie from uh, going for that Trick Room again. And so uh, Peter really does have now control of the speed going forward in the game and can decide to uh, maybe um, just keep things in his favor, make sure that there's no Trick Room going up. The Tyranitar remains faster than uh, the Indeedee potentially, um, and we can see 
that all of these Pokemon on Laurie's side of the field that are asleep stay asleep um, and that uh, Peter can just close out this game with a, a boosted Tyranitar. The Dragon Ball has stayed asleep for two turns, so uh, it could stay asleep for one more turn as well, but could also wake up, outspeed this Venusaur because there's no sun on the field at the moment. The Tyranitar could be switching out into that Torkoal to boost the speed of the Venusaur as well, if it was, did, did decide to do that, but Dragon Ball is going to be waking up. It's going to be going for a fly though instead, so not going to be taking out the Venusaur this turn, as the Venusaur is going to be moving next. It is going for that Frenzy Plant, did target down the Drachion, but once again, it switched out into the Ndidi, which will be KO to this Frenzy Plant, but now Venusaur will have to take that recharge turn and a lash out another one of the new moves coming out from the Tyranitar. It's going to miss the Flying Dragapult, and thanks to that Frenzy Plant as well, Venusaur is completely open to this fly. It certainly is, and the, the big question is whether Terrakion can wake up uh, this turn or not. Uh, I think it does have the opportunity to wake up, uh, potentially, if all of the stars align and Laurie um is in favor this turn so uh yeah it looks like uh, really the question is is what whether that's terrakion does wake up the fly is definitely going to knock out this venusaur as we see it coming in there uh picking up the ko question is is this tyrannicar survive this turn and is able to uh lash out onto the dragapult uh following and it looks like it is not going to be lashing out this turn the terrakion does wake up get the close combat into the Tyranitar and is e easily able to put up the knockout. So I believe there's just going to be a Torkoal in the back for, for Peter now against this Terrakion and Dragapult. And it's looking pretty good for Lowry um, being able to wake up with that Terrakion and knock out the Tyranitar here. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely clutch. And, and that's how sleep works sometimes. You know, sometimes you sleep for a long time. Sometimes you just have a little power nap and come back stronger. And that's exactly what Terrakion did this turn. As you say, uh, Torkoal... It's the only thing that uh, Peter's got, but probably not going to be able to close up the game. And we see the beat up coming there for, uh, from Dragapult into Terrakion. Uh, <laughs> usually something that we see early in the game using being used to close out a game at the end. Yeah, but it's, it's only going to give it two boosts this time because he only has two Pokemon left. But that's definitely going to be more than enough as we can see so much damage come out from this close combat. Opting for the 100% accurate move onto the Torkoal. Not quite able to pick up the knockout, but it's reduced its HP so much that this eruption is really going to be doing not much damage at all to the, both <laughs> these resisted hits as well. And yeah, Terrakion just needs to click one more close combat as well. And potentially another beat up into the into Terrakion, because then it would get the plus four that it so very much likes before. Yeah, I think uh, that would be going for style points there, but Peter knows <laughs> when the end is. It uh, doesn't want to. Uh, go through that and just decides to forfeit to Lowry. So uh, one game up for Finland here and uh, we'll, we'll have to see how uh, Peter decides to adjust in this game and, and how he decides maybe maybe to play the speed tiering just a little bit differently and manage that Terrakion a bit better. Yeah, he did fire off two Frenzy Plants into a Terrakion slot that did switch out. And if he had caught that Terrakion at any point with the Frenzy Plant, it would have picked up an easy KO and really put the Tyranitar that he also had in a fantastic position. But mm. um, being able to switch out into the other uh, two Pokemon, take the Frenzy Plants, was really good for, um, for Lowry here. Maybe the Venusaur wants to go for Vine Lashes instead based off that Frenzy Plant so it doesn't have to recharge. Well, potentially, uh, and that is one of the... One of the things that would be really good for Peter, uh, we said it multiple times during the, the previous game that, that, hey, you use Frenzy Plant, you have to recharge. So uh, maybe there was something that Peter was uh, going for. Maybe he wanted to play a, play a game where Tyranitar was Dynamaxing and that was his strategy alongside the weakness policy in Trick Room, um, but didn't quite work out for him. So I think, I think that's a really good strategy for uh, Peter to go for maybe lean a little bit more into that Venusaur for uh, Dynamaxing. The only trouble is you've got to get past that Dragapult as well at the same time. You've got to have access to those sleep powders because those were the things that were keeping Peter in the game. Yeah, he had such a, a fantastic turn one with the sleep powder into the Dynamax Dragapult. Uh, Lowry wasn't able to use his Dynamax at all. The Dragapult just stayed asleep for the two turns and then switched out. So mm. the sleep powder was very useful for, for Peter. But then if you're going for those sleep powders, you don't Dynamax the Venusaur and you will have to recharge on your Frenzy Plant attacks. So it's kind of an awkward, awkward um, uh, choice there for the Venusaur, whether it wants to deal with the Dragapult with the sleep powders or if it wants to not take those recharge turns with the Vine Lash over the Frenzy Plant. 
Uh, exactly that. And, and the big question is, is what are these trainers going to be leading this turn, uh, this game? Does the Dragapult Terrakion come out first turn for Lowry or not? Um, I, I don't think there's a reason for Peter not to go for his uh, Sun Mode with the Torkoal and Venusaur. It, it puts him at the front foot, and, and that's exactly what we're seeing coming out here. The uh, question is, is how Lowry decided to adjust this turn, uh, this game, should I say, uh, and that is with a Hatterene and Indeedy. Yeah, one of the classic leads if you want to get up your trick room here with the Hatterene and Indeedy. And both going to be threatening psychic damage onto this Venusaur with those expanding forces. With the Psychic Seed as well on the Indeedy, it's going to be able to take those special attacks very comfortably. And Venusaur and Torkoal both being special attackers here. Uh, still have to deal with those Sleep Powders though. You definitely do. And well, only the uh, Indeedy has to deal with the Sleep Powders. Uh, Hatterene known for its ability Magic Bounce. So it would... Bounce those Sleep Powders right back at Venusaur. Uh, not that it would do anything, but it does stop Hatterene from going to sleep. Uh, the big question is, is whether, uh, while Indeedy and Hatterene are faster than Torkoal, uh, whether Lowry wants to just remove it from the field using those expanding forces that you mentioned earlier. He's going to be switching out the Torkoal into the Tyranitar here, so going to be overwriting the sun with the sand. But the Venusaur is naturally faster than the uh, Hatterene. Not only Indeedy, but Indeedy is usually run quite slow as well. Uh, but not going to be going for Sleep Powders here. The Venusaur is going to be protecting itself instead. And the Indeedee was going to be redirecting any of the attacks coming out from the Venusaur. But Expanding Force is not going to be hitting anything here as it's going to be hitting into the Protect of the Venusaur and doing nothing to the Dark-type Tyranitar. Yeah, I really like that adjustment there from Peter. Um, knowing that Trick Room is quite a difficult proposition when you're facing down a Torkoal. Uh, you know, you, you want your Pokémon to be the fastest on the field and then there's a Torkoal sitting there which is known for naturally being one of the slowest Pokemon in the game. Certainly, certainly in the competitive uh, side of Pokemon is one of the slowest Pokemon that is used. Uh, so, yeah, really good prediction there from Peter and wanting to capitalize on the turns that it's fa he's faster than Lowry's team. Oh, he's switching out his fast Venusaur for this very slow dust drops instead. And the Hatterene is also going to be switching out in, in favor of the Terrakion. So going to be threatening big damage onto the Tyranitar. As it does look like the Tyranitar is opting for that Dynamax. So going to be able to fire off a big darkness into this Indeedy. Almost certainly going to be picking up a knockout there as well. And if he did darkness into the Hatterene as well, that would give a justified boost to the Terrakion. So it's going to be important which uh, target, the, target the Peter went for with this Tyranitar here. And indeed, he's not going to be able to threaten any damage onto it either with his expanding force, but it is going to be doing a bit of damage to this Dust Fox, thanks to it still being spread. And that was, uh, was quite a nice chunk from uh, going onto a Dust Fox, as it is what such a bolt Pokemon. But Darkness is going to be coming out into the Terrakion switch in. It's going to do a lot of damage, but it is going to be giving a justified boost to that Terrakion. That's why it did so much damage. That was a critical hit coming out onto the Terrakion. Nice. It's going to be reducing those special defenses, but also giving it that plus one attack with that justified as well. Now the big question is, is, is this Dusclops going to be able to set up its trick room if it wants to do that? Uh, or are we going to see some ally switch shenanigans? Uh, there are endless mind games that could be played in this position. But the important thing is that that Terrakion is the fastest thing on the field. It is going to be threatening very big damage against that Dynamax Tyranitar. And something Peter's going to have to play around no matter how he decides to act this turn. Of course, Lowry on the front foot also needs to target correctly. If uh, Lowry predicts that the Tyranitar goes for a max guard, does he in fact go for uh, a big rock slide or, uh, by the looks of things, potentially a max rock fall into the dust rock? Uh, try to remove that trick room as an option for Peter. Yeah, going to be Dynamaxing Trickon that did take so much damage, so it's going to be on a reasonably low amount of HP, but still wants to make use of that justified boost that it got from the switch in on the Max Darkness. An ally switch is going to be revealed on that dust slot, so if the Knuckle was going into the Tyrannus slot, it would do nothing to that ghost type, but instead it's going to be a rock fall coming out into what was the dust slot, so really wanting to stop that trick room and doing a nice chunk of damage to that Tyranitar. The expanding force is also going to come out, not caring about the ally switch, is still going to hit that dust slot with a bit more damage as well. Max Knuckle's going to come out from the Tyranitar, most likely going into this Terrakion, and even with the Dynamax boost in HP, is not able to survive that Knuckle. And hey, that's just one turn of Dynamax from Lowry again, and it's it's over. Uh, yeah, indeed, and uh, it's a real shame for Lowry, but a great play there by Peter. Uh, ally switch coming out, making sure that that uh, Tyranitar 
or sorry, the Dusclops wasn't taking any damage as it turned out, but it could have been protecting the Tyranitar as well, depending on how uh, Lowry decided to act. As it happened, uh, Peter just had to, to play a little bit of damage for the Tyranitar, uh, knocking out the uh, Terrakion on Lowry's side of the field and getting an attack boost. So going to be absolutely on the front foot going into this turn, uh, now able to knock out the Indeedy if it wants to, and knock out the Hatterene if indeed he doesn't go for a follow me. Um, and that Dusclops Hatterene interaction where uh, potentially both Pokemon or one Pokemon or neither of them could go for Trick Room and change the speed tiers of the uh, of the field, uh, depending on how uh, what how these players pick their moves will depend on whether Trick Room's up at the end of this turn or not. Yeah, we're going to be seeing maybe some attacks coming out from the Hatterene. The Dazzling Gleam would threaten a lot of damage on the Tyranitar, and the Bulldoze would activate that weakness policy, so we could potentially be seeing attacks or a Trick Room coming out from either of the two setters. But it's going to be redirecting this Max Darkness away from the Hatterene. This Indeedy with the Colony, easily able to pick up the knockout on that Indeedy. We're going to be lowering the Special Defense a little bit further on the Hatterene as well. And now we're going to have to see, did any of them opt for the Trick Room? Did they just go for the attacks instead? This Hatterene attacked, it went for the Dazzling Gleam, doing a nice chunk of damage to that Tyranitar, but is still going to be activating the weakness policy on the Tyranitar as well. And now we're going to have to see if that Dusclops did decide to set up Trick Room, which would put the Hatterene slower than it, and it is going for the Trick Room as well. So Tyranitar's got that weakness policy boost, but now the Hatterene is going to be able to underspeed and get that Dazzling Gleam off. It is exactly, and it's a bit of a shame there for Peter. Uh, what I was just thinking while uh, we were talking about that game, while uh, this Dragapult is the last Pokemon on Larry's side of the field, is going to be the slowest thing on the field. Uh, the, the difficulty is, or the, the opportunity was, that um, the Venusaur in the back for Peter, after that Max Darkness, would have been able to very easily dispatch the Hatterene with a Sludge Bomb, uh, leaving Dragapult to fend for itself against uh, that Tyranitar, um, Venusaur, and Torkoal in the back. But this Dragapult isn't in a, it isn't in the the worst position in the world, uh, especially now that Tyranitar has gone back to its normal form. That Dazzling Gleam probably going to be able to pick up the knockout on Tyranitar from this range. Uh, certainly going to be able to pick up the knockout on Dusclops. And yeah. uh, uh, there's not really a lot of ways for that Dragapult to take too much damage for the rest of the game. Yeah, well, the, the Tyrannus is not going to be taking any damage this turn. It's going to be protecting itself. And Will-O-Wisp is going to be coming out onto the Dragapult, so reducing the attack that's going to be coming out from the Dragapult even further with that burn. Not targeting the Magic Bounce this time. It is going to be connecting with the Dragapult, as it is going to be firing off a Dragon Dart into this Dust Lops, doing that little bit of chip necessary to knock it out. And Hattery most likely here going for a dozen Gleam, but no, it's going to be reversing the Trick Room mm. immediately. So now the Tyrannus is going to be faster than the, the Hatterene again. It, it is, and the Tyranitar probably not going to go down now from a burnt Dragapult attack. Um, quite potential that this Dragapult is trained to be a little bit bulkier rather than offensive. Uh, you don't want to do too much damage to your Drachion when you're beating up, and uh, certainly we've seen it be able to uh, sponge attacks quite well so far in this set so it may be um, a little bit of a, a, wait, a missed opportunity there for uh, Lowry not being able to just knock out the Tyranitar make sure the last threat to that Dragapult is removed from the field uh, before Dragapult has to uh, go mono and mono uh, with the rest of uh, Peter's team. Yeah, well, P Peter positioned himself quite nicely. If the Trick Room wasn't reversed, the Torkoal could have come in and been able to threaten a huge amount of damage with the Eruption as it would be the naturally slowest thing on the field. But instead of reversing the Trick Room, and now the Venusaur gets to come in and outspeed the Hatterene and threaten super effective damage with that Sludge Bomb as well. And the Dragapult being burned is really not going to be doing too much damage. Maybe the Dragon Darts isn't even enough to knock out the Trenter, and we could just be seeing a double knockout here. We certainly could be, and, and this is probably where the Torkoal comes in for the Tyranitar on Peter's side of the field. Make sure that Venusaur is going first. Uh, Sludge Bomb against Hatterene with its reduced level of special defense will likely pick up the knockout. Um, and so we, we do end up at that position where Hatterene is um, the, last, uh, the last Pokemon to go down and Dragapult's the last Pokemon on the field. But 
A flamethrower critical hit coming out there from Dragapult. By passing the burn, going for a special attack instead, but the critical hit, still not enough. And the Sludge Bomb is going to be targeting the Dragapult instead of the Hatterene. And Lash Out is going to be going into the Hatterene. So, going to be targeting the, the wrong way around that we expected, but still able to pick up the knockout on the Hatterene with that Lash Out, thanks to that weakness policy boost. And such a cool animation from the new move Lash Out as well. Definitely. That's the first time I've seen that in game. And uh, brilliant, brilliant move. Uh, as you said, Jamie, the, the slightly the wrong way around to what we were expecting, but uh, maybe uh, Peter was expecting some protects to be coming out from the Dragapult, wanting to make sure that Tyranitar actually did uh, get to attack in that turn. The Flamethrower does make quite a bit of a difference, though, for that Dragapult. Gives it the ability to bypass the burn. Uh, something else that uh, does help it is critical hits, uh, which is what it's getting from those... Uh, Dragon Darts coming out, but not quite enough to pick up the KO on either Pokemon as a Frenzy Plant comes out from the Venusaur. And the Lash Out coming out from the Tyranitar to, to finish up this game and send us into a Game 3. So, uh, very nicely played from Peter there, being able to position his Tyranitar very well. Uh, stop Lowry from making use of his Dynamax once again. The Terrakion got one attack off, but so far from two games, Lowry's only been able to get one max move off. And, and yet the games have been quite close, really, when you look at look at the final positions. Uh, they could have gone either way at any point. And that really does strike me as, as something that Lowry really does need to uh, have a think about coming into the next game. Uh, maybe deciding to uh, pull the trigger slightly later on the Dynamax. I think that could be uh, something that Lowry considers in the final game. And... Uh, as you say, making use of the uh, Dynamax is so important for uh, both the damage and the extra effects that you uh, get off for the rest of the game as to uh, whether you're going to be in that winning position at the end or not. Yeah, we've seen the speed interactions come into play uh, quite often with the Trick Room as well, with the Venusaur being very fast to the Chlorophyll, but then the Torkoal being very slow, but then you've got Hatterenes as well on, on Lowry's side, so uh, the speed's definitely playing a part here because we saw, we saw Lowry reverse the Trick Room immediately. He didn't want to play in Trick Room when the Dust Spot set it up because he was mm. fearing that Torkoal, mm. but then it just let the, the Tyranitar and Venusaur be able to outspeed and, and attack before the Hatterene as well. And certainly, and with that with that burn effect being in play, something that, that Dragapult and Terrakion having that Hardstone are going to have to fear from the Dust Spot. So definitely, definitely not a status that uh, Lowry wants to be in. The big question is, is whether Maybe that Torkoal comes from uh, Lowry's side of the field. We've seen uh, quite a few sets previous of Torkoal carrying moves like Body Press, which would certainly do a lot of damage to Tyranitar on Peter's side of the field. So maybe there's an adjustment there where uh, Lowry says, hey, you know what, you've, you've wanted to play in Trick Room for uh, the last couple of games. I'll tell you what, we can play in Trick Room, but I'm going to bring my uh, really slow Pokemon and make you work for uh, the Trick Room advantage that you get. Yeah, so we're going to have to see if we're going to be seeing that Venusaur Torkoal come out again, but instead it's going to be Venusaur paired with Tyranitar. So not the weather that the Venusaur wants here, but actually we are going to get the weather that the Venusaur wants <laughs> because the Tyranitar is going to be setting the sand first because it outspeeds the Torkoal, but then the Torkoal on Lowry's side is going to be setting the sun for both the Lilligan and the Venusaur here. It is, and <laughs> that's uh, really puts the Tyranitar in a difficult position because it is more vulnerable. Sandstorm boosts Tyranitar's special defense, and without that boost, it is under threat from the Lilligant. Of course, the Lilligant's under threat from the Venusaur, and the Venusaur's under threat from Torkoal. Uh, the Torkoal's under threat from Tyranitar, so we've got a little bit of a cycle going on in this game. And um, and so the, the big question is, is whether Sleep Powder's come out from either Lilligant or the Venusaur. Uh, does the Venusaur outspeed the Lilligant? It's naturally slower than Lilligant, so a likelihood is Lilligant gets an opportunity to attack first. Um, and does Sandstream come into play later down the line, or does the Sun stay out for the next few turns? Well, the uh, Sun was already out, and the Torkoal is now asleep for uh, Peter's side. The Sleep Powder does connect on the Torkoal, and the Sleep Powder coming out from the Venusaur. Both Torkoals are going to be taking a nap here. <laughs> They absolutely are, so uh, neither neither one gets to attack, and uh, yeah, this is a fairly equal position from just from the perspective of what Pokemon are asleep and what Pokemon have what health left. 
Uh, but of course, the Venusaur on Peter's side of the field does have a major advantage over the Lilligant on Lowry's side of the field. And so uh, Peter is definitely in the driving seat and does have the opportunity to just maybe wait out a little bit longer with his own Torkoal to see if it can uh, wake up sooner. And the Torkoal on Peter's side was guaranteed to sleep uh, if it stayed in this turn, as it did switch in. But now it's switched straight back out and brought back the Tyranitar to reset the weather back to the sand that Peter wanted straight away with his lead of the Tyranitar instead. Both Torkoals are asleep and both Torkoals are switching out here. So uh, not wanting to deal with the sleep turn. going to be switching out this Torkoal into the Dragapult for Lowry's side and are going to be seeing a Dynamax or potentially a Gigantamax coming out from Peter's side with that Venusaur and it's going to have to see, is it going to be the Gigantamax form? It there is, it so is. getting access to that Vine Lash as well, going to be able to do some nice uh, damage, residual damage with that, and also potential Max Ooze is coming out into the Lilligan if it wants to boost its special attacks as well. Holland Puff is the move of choice from Lilligan, doing a little bit of chip to the Venusaur, but Max Ooze is going to be doing a lot more than chip to this Lilligan. It is going to be doing a lot of damage, bringing it down to its Focus Sash, which will, and the Sandstorm has just come in from the Tyrannosaurs mm. as well, so mm. that Focus Sash doesn't help the Lilligan, it will be dropping to the Sandstream as well, as giving that Venusaur a special attack boost. And Dragapult's going to be hit by the Sandstorm, going to be taking a little bit of chip, but this Lilligan, brought down to its Focus Sash, is going to be knocked out by the Sand here. That's a lovely way, and, and one that's as old as time in VGC, of uh, bringing in your Sand Pokémon, uh, knocking something down to Sash and just watching it getting knocked out at the end of the turn. I always find it so satisfying to, to see a great turn there from uh, Peter. Of course, Peter does have the option now uh, that he's got his Venusaur on the field to just switch in his Torkoal, get that Sun into play um, and make sure that his Venusaur is going to be attacking first in, in front of this Terrakion. The question being, does Terrakion uh, protect itself or not? Um, and also, does the Dragapult have any way of boosting its speed with something like Max Airstream coming off Fly or Acrobatics? Well, we saw that Fly in the game one, so maybe that is what uh, Lowry needs to go for with this Dragapult. And we are going to be seeing, once again, the Weather Setter uh, switch out for another Weather Setter. This time going to be setting the sun, boosting the speed of the Venusaur so it can outspeed both the Dragapult and the Terrakion, and we are going to be seeing a Dynamax coming out from Lowry's side. Is it going to be that Terrakion to maybe be able to take the Vine Lash that's going to come out from the Venusaur, or is it going to be that Dragapult potentially going for those Airstreams, and it will be the Dragapult, so most likely going to be targeting down this Venusaur with an Airstream. Terrakion is very open to a potential Vine Lash coming out from the Venusaur, which will be able to outspeed this Dragapult, and Terrakion will be protecting itself, so if, it's, if a Vine Lash does go into that slot, it won't be doing as much damage, but here we go. The G-Max Vine Lash, the new move coming out from the Venusaur, still doing half to that Terrakion through that Protect, thanks to that special attack boost that it got from the Ooze as well. And now Lowry side is going to be trapped in those Vines. Airstream is the move of choice. Coming out from the Dragon Wow. That pick up the knockout on the Venusaur as well, that thanks did, to yeah, that critical, critical hit. hit. Yeah, there that's very unfortunate for, for Peter there. We're going to be raising the speed of the Dragapult and the Terrakion, but crucially knocking out the Gigantamax on the user's side. And it's a real mixed bag of a turn there for uh, Lowry. You know, he's got the uh, speed boost that's brilliant, uh, the uh, ferocious beating coming out from the secondary effect of G-Max Vine Lash, so uh, that's going to be in play for the next four turns, including this one. So three more turns, and um, that's going to be on the field and doing quite a bit of damage to both uh, Dragapult and Terrakion on Lowry's side of the field. And of course, Max Airstream is something that uh, Lowry needed to go for, but it does mean that, that Beat Up is no longer available for the uh, Durala, uh, sorry, the Dragapult to opt for on Terrakion. So you have to sacrifice a little bit of your strategy in order to um, increase your speed, make sure that you are the fastest Pokemon on the field, and uh, be in the position where you can carry on in the game. And we're going to see a darkness come out from the Dragapult. We've seen all four of its moves. It doesn't have any ghost moves. It's going to be targeting down the Dustcops with a beat up max move, which isn't very strong at all. Not doing too much damage to that Dustcops. And most likely going to be seeing a rock slide come out from the Dragon. No, we're not going to be seeing a rock slide. We're going to be seeing the close combat into the Torkoal doing a nice chunk of damage, but 
That means there's no flinch potential on this dust box. If it wants to set up the trick room, it is free to do so, as the Torquo is going to take its mandatory turn of sleep, and now the dust box is going to set up that trick room. So now the Torquo just needs to wake up, and Peter's in a fantastic position. Yeah, and I think uh, probably in a fantastic position regardless. You can see how much damage uh, those uh, that GMAX Vine Lash is doing uh, to at Lowry's side of the field and that's going to continue for another couple of turns so uh, that Terrakion is certainly under threat of getting knocked out this turn uh, regardless of what happens to on Peter's side of the field and certainly if that Dustclops does have a form of recovery on Peter's side he's going to be able to stand the test of time and uh, really just wait out the Vine Lash to do all of the damage that he needs to do. Well the Torco did wake up this turn is going to be going for a solar beam and thanks to the sun it doesn't need to take the charge turn it's going to be attacking with the solar beam immediately into this terrakion doing that little bit of extra damage to pick up the knockout on the terrakion here and we did see a helping hand go into the dragapult so to get to the attack of it's going to be doing a lot of damage but no it's not it's going to be burned from this will is <laughs> reducing the damage a lot thanks to its attack being cut in half the worm is going to be coming out from the dragapult though but thanks to that burn, it is not able to pick up the KO on that tall pole. It's certainly not, and uh, you know, if that uh, if that turn the tall pole wasn't able to wake up, uh, maybe you're looking at a different end game. Uh, the Tracheon definitely would be not would have been knocked out this turn, uh, but probably would have seen uh, maybe a rock slide coming out from the Tracheon onto that tall pole, uh, doing a bit more damage. Maybe would have been enough to pick up the knockout in combination, um, but alas. So Torkoal did wake up, uh, it goes towards uh, Peter and Will-O-Wisp definitely, definitely making a huge impact to this turn. And of course that attack drop coming out from Max Whirlwind not really doing any, uh, putting, uh, providing any value to uh, Lowry as Torkoal and Dustops are not known for using physical attacks. So uh, we're going to have to see what uh, Peter's got left up his sleeve. We've got a sleeping Torkoal on Lowry's side, so I'm not necessarily going to be able to attack this turn. Well, this Torkoal was awake and able to attack this turn with a heat wave, doing a little, little bit of damage to the Torkoal and the Dragapult, and the Torkoal did remain asleep on Lowry's side. And now the Dustbox is doing a little bit more damage with the Bulldoze, reducing the speeds. No weakness policy to Ranitor on the field this time. It's just going to be doing that little bit of damage with the Bulldoze. And Dragon Darts is going to be coming out from the Dragapult be doing a very very small amount of this dust clops and a very small amount of this full cold which was not enough to ko it and we're going to get the final turn of this ferocious beating from this fine lash as well and now that the dynamax is done on the dragapults uh on the dragapult it's just going to be taking a lot of damage from that fine lash as well as the burn and putting both talk on dragapult dangerously low it's almost like uh venusaur didn't get knocked out a few turns ago with the amount of damage that's residual from that uh that gmax fine lash um just doing so much work and we saw it uh, really early in the format with Charizard and its uh, G-Max Wildfire. Uh, nice to see Venusaur following in its footsteps and doing its own version of that uh, that move. Uh, but it looks like Torkoal staying asleep this turn on Lowry's side of the field and a heat wave from Peter following up and picking two knockouts up uh, to close out this game. Yeah, thanks for that critical hit on the Torkoal was able to pick up the KO. All the turns of sleep for the Torko, unfortunately not be, uh, being able to attack here. And Peter is going to be able to take this set 2-1 for Poland. Absolutely. A really good game there. Always nice to see those matches go to free games. I, de I definitely think there was a, a real, um, really interesting team coming out from Lowry. I did like his use of Lilligan, even though it's probably uh, not quite so good as Venusaur in this format. Um, but it was really nice to see him in the last game pilot it and use some of the things that it does have over Venusaur, like that Pollen Puff, which could have been used to just make sure his Terrakion was a little bit healthy, make sure his Dragapult, which we saw took, take so much damage or so many hits through throughout the set, keeping that healthy. So some, some really nice examples of the different things you can do with team building. Yeah, one of the things we that does set Lilligan apart from the Venusaur is that after you. Maybe he could have gone for the after you onto his Torkoal to mm. attack before that sleep powder came out. But unfortunately, we didn't see that. And we were able to see so much work put in from that Vine Lash. Like, we, we, like you said before, we've seen how much damage the Wildfire was doing from the Charizard's G-Max move. And Venusaur mm. is doing as much damage as well. And 
having access to chlorophyll, being able to move very fast, get that Fire Mash onto, out onto the field. It's a very threatening Pokemon going into this Series 5. It really, really is, and and expertly piloted by Peter. I did, I did really enjoy the interaction between uh, the different speeds as well. Peter playing at both the ceiling, right up the way here with his Venusaur, and right down at the bottom with his Trick Room, Dustclops, and Tyranitar, uh, going for those bulldozers, making sure that, um, well, Terrakion at one point, but also all of uh, Lowry's Pokemon were as slow as they possibly could be for him to take the most advantage of the big attacks that he was launching out. That's one of the benefits of running these very fast Pokemon and these mm. very slow Pokemon. You get to decide which speed tier you're running in. If you have access to that trick room, you can go very fast. And then as that Pokemon's being knocked out, as we saw from the Venusaur, it was knocked out and still doing damage. But then he was into the trick room setting with the Torkoal as well. So uh, yeah. really nicely played from Peter here. Yeah, very much 